Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day four of the March Lico Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's problem. And today is a hard problem. Oh, no. I mean, judging by the number, I guess I've done it in a contest recently. That's why I'm like, eh, oh, it was like half a year ago. Let's take a look anyway. I mean, I don't remember it really. But I also want to check to see. Okay, no free coins. All right, yeah, let's take a, let's take a look at this. Um, since this is a hard, I'll probably just do this, and we'll see if I do an extra problem afterwards. But yeah, okay. So you're given an integer raise nums and two integer min k and max k. Um, I'm with, just to be clear though, it's only been six months ago, um, and I don't think that in general my videos changed that or like the way that I explain things may change. So I don't know. Tip, 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 if this video is not good enough for you, uh, what I mean is that um, uh, definitely check out that video as well because that video is not that old. So I don't think it's quite outdated yet. Um, but it, the style will be a little different because that's a contest video, I assume. And where now, I am going to just go over my thought process as I'm thinking through it. I don't remember this one though, necessarily. So yeah, so okay, so a fixed bound subarray of nums is a subarray that satisfies the following conditions. You have a min value in the subarray is equal to min k, max is max k. Return a number of fixed bound subarrays. Okay. A subarray is a contiguous part of an array. Okay. Um so you want min to oh equal to exactly, right? Mm, okay. Um, if I have to guess, mm, it's going to be some kind of... Um, so there are a couple of things that I'm thinking about, right? Um, I think this reminds me of a... Eh, this is hard. Uh, I'm trying to think of it right now a little bit. I, mean, I think I have some ideas. Um, I think my first idea may be something like sliding window but i don't think that really makes sense to be honest it's just that you know i'm just trying to be transparent about my thoughts a little bit um i think one thing that i would try to think is that i mean well one is that it only the only thing that matters is min k and max k and maybe you have to do a little bit something different if they're the same or something like this handle it a little bit different um but but then what does it mean right um, what what this means is that you know we play this concept about like degree of freedom. Um, the first thing that I might try to do is something that is um, a little bit naive. I mean, it's not going to be the solution, and I know just I know that it's not going to be the solution, at least not the naive one by default. But maybe there's something that we can optimize, right? Um, and the naive, well, the real naive one is n squared, just or maybe n cubed, depending on how you want to implement it. But you just look at every subarray, right? Uh, every subarray, and then each one of those all vans, so that's why it's n cube or n choose three, which is all of n cube, of course. Uh, though it's like though, uh, uh, the math that I always think about if you want to actually do those, because it is n choose three instead of strictly n cube, then it's like n cube over six, which is still too big for this problem, but for certain values of n, you may be able to sneak it in. Um, but in any case, uh, yeah, that's not the. the thing here um but then the, the slightly less naive one is that we only have to care about the mark points right so i'm looking at this right now maybe i should just join ascii art a little bit right um and basically the idea is that given this we only care about the ones and the fives right and of course you need both of them into the same uh, uh subway way <sighs> man i don't know if you could hear it but they are the window isn't even that far from me, but they're honking like crazy. It's very loud to me. I don't know if you could hear it. Hopefully the mic doesn't pick it up and I'm just like, you know, people at home are like, what is Larry talking about? Then nothing. Ignore me. But yeah, um, I think the first thing I want to do is... Extend this a little bit so that the visualization is maybe a little bit better. Uh, um, because I don't like the one in the beginning because then it's just a little bit confusing then here i think th there are a couple of operations that i'm trying to think and balance in my head right um, for example if, if we see a one do we look for the previous five do we look for the next five or you know and so forth right because basically you almost have 
you know, up to N5 or the max number, and then you have N of the min numbers, and then you just try to figure out a way to kind of pair them up in a good way, right? Um, and also, and this reminds me of a problem that I've faced before, but I don't remember the formulation of that problem, but, but I just remember the visualization about counting, and it's just that, um, you know, given that these two, um, everything to the left and everything to the right is um, what I call a degree of freedom, right? Meaning that the two numbers to the left, so you could choose between three degrees of freedom, zero, one, and two. Um, and then on the right, the three numbers, even including this five, but this five is irrelevant at this point because it is dominated by these two anyway. Oh, wait, hmm. Well, I was wrong about something that I made, a comment I made earlier, which is that uh, clearly because this, this seven, it, it gets bounded by that, right? So you, actually, I was wrong. Um, in this case, it is actually only there's only one number between a number that's bigger. So then the max k is no longer different. So then it becomes zero and one, which is two degree of freedom, right? But what what I mean by that is that now, now the three numbers on the left side, two numbers on the right side. So that means that there's six for this pair of one and five, right? And then maybe that's it, really. I mean, th th I mean, that's the core concept. There are a lot of edge cases in my head. That's what I'm trying to think. For example, what if this is a five, right? What does that mean? Um, because, well, now we, one thing that I would say is that now you could delimit it by numbers that are bigger because you never need to, because nothing will ever cross the border, right? So you can just kind of separate them, for example, right? So, you, so now you're going to even think about it as having two different arrays or something like this. And you could, you could, uh, uh, you could divide this in a number of ways, but but yeah, but that's the way that I would think about it. One thing I'm just looking for now is just whether there's a mod thing, but which is actually a little bit odd. Maybe I guess in Java or something it'll be a long. I mean, I guess it'll fit in a long, yeah. But in Python, I just wanted to make sure because this can go up to 10 to the fifth, choose two, right? Which is 10 to the 10 over two, which is 5 billion, which is big enough for to make an issue uh, in int anyway is what I mean okay so so we did make an observation uh, and I forgot about it or I didn't realize about it um, right that you could divide the subarrays into these uh, things that are bounded by numbers that are with between min k and max k okay I guess the only thing that I wanted to think about is that now what happens if you have two of these right because then now the degree of freedom is a little bit awkward um, but I, I, I think this is a thing that I, there is a technique that I vaguely remember. And I think the, um, this is a technique that I actually do know. Um, but I think during the, now I kind of remember it from the contest, but, but in a way that is because like I practiced this because I, during the contest, I knew that beforehand, but then it took me a while to come up with this, but because of the contest and it was only six months ago, I think. And it, and just to be clear, I didn't think about it until just now. Though I wasn't, you know, we, we've been talking, right? So like, I'm not a hundred percent like focused on solving it per se because I'm still trying to explain things, and that slows me down, of course. But uh, but this is a thing that uh, I do vaguely remember. Or I don't even know if it's right to be honest, but I just vaguely have this thing in my head where instead of you know try to figure out like these pairs and then try to combine left and right. Um, one thing that you can do is just look to the left and see how, how many things you can do. And once you do that, then you look at the one and then now you go, okay, here's the one. Um, so, so then you look to the left and here you have two degrees of freedom, right? So now the, the count that ends with one is two. And then now you look at the three. Well, three, um, now to the left, again, two degrees of freedom. So you add two. And then now five. Mm, this one... Uh, well, five now matches this one, maybe. And then now this one has three degree of freedom. So this is basically saying how many subarrays ends with this current element that fits the condition of this fixed bound subarray, right? And then this five, the last one is here. So then now everything to the, this three degree of freedom because the two numbers and so forth. And then the two is also three degrees of freedom. I think that, I think this is one of those things where I, if you ask me like right at this moment about like proofs and, and this stuff, 
Um, I'm probably like 80% certain, but, n you know, well, one is that maybe I just missed an edge case, which, you know, isn't, isn't, doesn't mean that I'm wrong, wrong per se, but, uh, I mean, it, it may be in the, in the right direction, but just didn't, don't have all the details, but, but, uh, but yeah, but if you ask me to prove it, like, like I have a strict proof, I don't really have one for you. So let's kind of put, get a, let, let's take. A look at this and yeah so basically first of all we let's, let's start with an array um, and then we basically loop through the the nums if um, with x is in between min k and max k we append x otherwise if it's outside then we we can we add the count to solve uh, the current array and then just set it to empty again, right? So that's basically what I'm trying to do here, just to be clear. Can't spell count correctly though. And, and, uh, and then now we have solve, right, of an array. And this is kind of what we were talking about. Um, how do we want to do it, right? Basically, I guess all we want is that we like last min maybe, and then a la and then a last max. And then we just kind of maybe condition on it. Um, yeah, because then now we're just counting everything to the left. Right? Okay, yeah. Oh, of course, we should also keep the count. I have to make sure that I get this right. But yeah, if, if nums or all sub i is equal to, um, is equal to min k, then last min is you go to or sub or, or just i because we want the index. Maybe I should make that clear. If I mean it doesn't make sense anyway, otherwise, right? Uh, last max is you go to i, right? So then now, now what is the degree of freedom? Well, the degree of freedom is basically the bigger number because basically you know there's only only well. There are more than two cases if you count the nuns, but let's just say that they're both not none, then the only two cases, right? One is that the last min is before la last max, or the other one is last max is before last min. And in that case, the index determines, or like the index of the smaller number, which is the one that comes before, tells you how many numbers are before uh, the thing, right? So yeah, and also in that case, Let's see. Index zero means that there's zero numbers in front of it, so you have zero de or one degree of freedom. So that means that we want something like um, we want something like min of last min last max plus one, right? So we count at this, and then now that obviously doing min of none doesn't really make sense. But then now you you realize that this can be a seven node that could be negative one. I hope that's right. But I think that's a general idea. Let's give it a spin. Get involved. <laughs> oh, I don't know that I handled this correctly. But still should be okay. Why am I getting zero? Oh, 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 oh. Why I'm getting zero is because I am an idiot. But actually, we could fix uh, it's, it's not It's not parsing the last one. I, I make this mistake a lot. But you could just append like something like really big. Uh, and that's like a really big value that obviously wouldn't. So then now that is good. Um, okay. Um, I think this is okay. So let's give it a quick submit. Hopefully I didn't mess up something. Uh, and I I don't remember how I did it in the contest, to be honest. Um, but I imagine this is much faster because um, I think the hard part for me is to think about symmetry breaking. Because for me, it's just so easy to think about things in terms of symmetry. And I don't know if there's an easy way to count it that way. If you do know of it, um, let me know in the comments. But the way that uh, breaking that symmetry of just counting to the right, and then now you have the sub, how many how many sub arrays ends at this current index, and then now it becomes much solvable because then now you don't have to worry about like, hey, what was the last thing I counted and stuff, and everything else feels natural from the way that we talked about it. Um, yeah, because things become inclusive bound where the overlaps don't matter as much because uh in terms of like ranges overlap because now you know that you're not double counting because of that okay i think i also had an issue with like yeah but uh how did i do last time i did it with deck mm. 
I mean, the group vibe part, I mean, this part, I guess, is the same. Uh, I was actually debating doing group vibe, but I feel like that's too fancy. Um, did I do this during the contest? Did I submit it during the contest? I don't know if I actually saw this during the contest, to be honest. Uh, but this is basically, yeah, this is just doing the men. I see what I used to did, but, do, but um, I think this way is obviously cleaner. Um, I think I made some simplifications um, that is from this observation that we were just talking about. But yeah, what is the complexity, right? This is going to be linear time, linear space. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Well, the way that I did it is linear space, but you can do it in constant um, constant space for for the obvious reason that uh, you don't have to create an array like I did. You could just keep track of the indexes, right? If you keep track of the indexes and then walk it here, um, you know, there's no reason why, and you have to be careful and stuff like this, but there's no reason why this can't be all of one space because this is just going to be a regular for loop for the, the rate in place, right? And, um, but, you know, I'll leave that for you to do at home. Um, but yeah, lin so the way that I solved it is linear, uh, linear time, linear space. Uh, you can do it in linear time, linear or constant space. Uh, and that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or a struggle with anything uh, here. And yeah, stay good, stay healthy, take good mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye bye.